Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today, I'll be reviewing this F722 Special Edition flight controller from Maytag. This all-in-one F7 based flight controller and PDB from Maytech has a beast of a spec that features a dual IMU, a barometer, dual camera inputs and a VTX power switch that make it really stand out from the crowd. And this makes it ideal for mini quads, long range quads and wings, pretty much just about anything. And it doesn't end there, it's got 8 D-Shot ProShot ESC outputs so you could use it in an octocopter. In fact, I can't find anything they've left out, to be honest. So if you plan on building an FPV octocopter, long range with switchable FPV HD cameras, or just dual forward and backward facing FPV cameras, running Betaflight or iNav, this is the flight controller for you. But it's equally as good a spec for a regular mini quad, and it's all using an F7 based controller. So let's take a closer look. As usual, Maytech provide awesome schematics on their website and the documentation is always clear so you won't be left scratching your head. They've got a really comprehensive connection matrix for Betaflight and iNav as well. And it supports Betaflight or iNav using the Maytex F722 SE target build. And as well as a board, you also get some silicon vibration grommets, a Rubicon 35 volt 270 microfarad low ESR capacitor, although at 35 volts this might be a bit tight on tolerance if you're using 8S. And you get this rather nice insulator come spacer so you can mount everything in your stack really close and not short anything out. And this uses the standard full size 30.5 millimeter mounting. And as soon as you pick it up, it just oozes quality. They've used a heavier weight PCB material. This is about two millimeters thick. And that means it's not gonna break anytime soon. And the high current pads like these have got plenty of through holes. So they're not gonna lift off the board easily when you solder them. And if you're using this with, say, 8S batteries, you're going to need lots of heat on these, so they need to be pretty tough. Uh, here's where you attach your battery. Fairly standard arrangement. Again, lots of through holes on here. You've got the main current sensor. And here is the F7 chip. It's a 216 MHz STM32F722RET6. And under here, you've got the barometer just there. It's quite small. That's the BMP280 connected using IC2. And here's the USB connector and the boot button. And what's really interesting is the USB connections are available on the underside of the board here. So if you break something, on the connector, you could just solder a USB connector on or hook it up with some wires. And normally, all this stuff is totally inaccessible. And also, on this side of the board, there's a micro SD card slot for your black box logging. And this guy down here is the AT7456E OSD chip. And as I said before, this has got dual IMUs on it. There's a standard MPU 6000, which lives just down here. And there's a super accurate and low noise 32 kilohertz ICM 20602, which is just next to the MCU up here. But remember this flight controller doesn't support using both gyros at the same time. You'll need to set that in the CLI on Betaflight or iNav. By default, it uses the MPU 6000, that guy down there, and the ICM 20602 provides a faster response and is super sensitive. So if you're gonna use it, make sure you're vibration free and the ESC noise is really well filtered. So this is how the board is designed to be mounted. This way around, with the quad at the front here, got the arrow pointing that way. Obviously you could put it the other way around and reconfigure it, but this is the way it's designed to be used. 
and in each corner you've got the power and the D-Shot Pro Shot outputs for ESCs 1, 2, 3 and 4 and you've got the positive and the negative and the signal output here 1, 2, 3 and 4 and there's also an RS6 pad so you can use that for ESC telemetry data and this is connected to UART6 basically. This makes the ESC Y soldering nice and easy and there's nothing too closely spaced. Very nice. And just here are the ESC pads for motors 5, 6, 7 and 8 if you need them. And the ESC signals to 1 and 4 and a ground are also on this side of the board here. And this is so you can easily wire them up to a 4-in-1 ESC that has its own current sensor. And here's the onboard current sensor, which is good for 184 amps. Pretty impressive. And just up here is the current sensor pad. That's an input and an output for current data. And this is where you'd wire the current sensor on a 4-in-1 ESC board that's got its own current sensor. In that case, you'd be using it as an input. Now, down along this edge, you've got the five volt back output, and that's rated at two amps continuous, and a ground, and there's the 2812 serial LED strip and buzzer connections just here. Then you've got TX1, RX1, TX2 and RX2, which are the UART 1 and 2 inputs and outputs. Now, RX2 is the default for Serial RX, which is SBUS, and this is where I'd connect my SBUS receiver. You've got RX2, 4.5 volts and ground next to each other, actually in the right order. And this is really well thought out, having those together. And there's a huge benefit of using this 4.5 volt power connector here because the power for that is supplied by the USB port so your receiver will power up from USB and you won't need your main battery to set up beta flight receiver stuff and you can also use RX2 for PPM if you're using that. Also any UART port can be connected to your S bus and they all have built-in inversion which is a very nice touch. And also your FR Sky F port, Smart Port, Tramp and Smart Audio can be connected to any unused UART TX pin. Now down in here we've got the CL and DA pins that are used for SCL and SDA for connecting things like some GPS and compasses. It's all the I squared C, I2C stuff. And what else have we got on here? Ah yeah, just up there we've got the 3.3 volts output if you're planning to use a spectrum receiver. So we whiz this round on the other side of the board. We've got the other UART 3 and 4 pads and the video and the VTX connections. Now this board supports dual cameras and you can switch between them with a transmitter switch you set up in Betaflight or iNav. C1 just here is the default camera signal input and C2 is the second one and you get 5 volts and ground for your camera power as well. Now if you use two cameras you will need to power them both from these pads here so you don't get any power supply noise and it's a shame there isn't another set of power pads because having two pairs of wires on these pads is a bit fiddly to solder. And then just here you've got your VTX out to connect to your VTX board and a switchable battery voltage, this guy here labelled VBAT, so that you can turn the VTX power off from your transmitter. We look on the other side of the board, spin it round. So up here we've got an RSSI input. So you can take the RSSI level from your receiver and display it in the OSD. And just down here is the PA4, which is the analog airspeed sensor in iNav. 
Phew, well, that's about it. I thought the features and the spec of this board were so good that it was worth covering it in a lot of detail. It'd be all too easy to think it's just another flight control, and clearly it's not. It's fully loaded, very flexible, and won't break the bank. And it's full of some really nice touches that are well thought out. It's fantastic. Any downsides? I'm struggling to find much, to be honest. The PCB uses a heavyweight 2mm material and is slightly heavier than similar size boards, but it's only just a tad over 10 grams, so it's not exactly heavy. And it could do with another pair of 5 volt and ground pins for the second camera over here on this side. That would just make things easier for the wiring. And maybe the low ESR capacitor voltage rating is a bit low if you plan to use 8S. But this is just being mega picky. I'm planning to use this on a long range quadcopter with dual cameras that runs iNav. So I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.